Hey guys, what is going on? Hexlex here with another Master Duel video for you. It's been a little while since we started on the home screen. When I first started the channel, this is where we'd always start the videos, but uh, I wanted to start on the home screen in this video in particular because tonight, which as of the time of recording this, is the second night of the uh, season. We just finally reached Diamond 5. Uh, finally climbing our way up through Plat 1. I actually got up to Plat 1 uh, last night. Uh, well, actually within nine hours of the season, so it's funny if, if, you know, it hadn't been for Diamond coming in now, I would have actually beat my record of getting to the top rank, you know, but it is what it is, so... Um yeah, I tried to climb a little bit more after that to get up to Diamond. I wanted to get to Diamond ideally by last night, but uh, yeah, I ended up actually back down at Plat 2 by the end of the night. And uh, I've been going at it for, you know, I'm looking actually here almost 8 hours, good lord. And it took me that long just to get from Plat 2 up to Diamond 5 tonight. So, uh, you know, we're already with this new rank, I think, starting to see like an increase of the... Well, I mean, I'm also just playing really early during the season, but... Um, you know, the, the competitive players, especially the Drytron players, are out, are out in full force. Uh, everyone wanting to get to the new rank and the top of the new rank as well, I'm sure, as quickly as possible. I mean, I can't blame them, I'm one of them, but uh, we're here in this video not just to talk about the Diamond Rank, but specifically the deck that we actually got up there with, uh, which I thought was going to be Trizu. I was like, you know, when I, I kind of like, not gave up on, but I retired at Emancipator pretty early on into Gold and just switched to Trizu, and I thought I was going to be using that the whole time, but after playing Trizu for quite a while, like probably five or six of those eight hours and just bouncing between plat two and one i was just like you know what i'm just gonna switch over to add emancipator even though i'm seeing a lot of drytron i just want to change it up and it was you know a couple of hours after that with add emancipator that i was able to actually climb from plat two up to diamond five so not the order i expected to do it in but i'm actually kind of glad because i didn't want to post just like five trizu videos in a row i wanted some variety as well so uh yeah i'm glad we managed to get up there with that emancipator the build has not changed at all. We'll go ahead and finally take a look at it here, as we usually start here now in these videos. But, uh, yeah, build has not changed at all. It is the same from my, um, from my, you know, double feature deck profiles on the first there that I posted. So let's go ahead and just go through the list real quick, card by card, and then we'll go ahead and take a look at some games. I've actually got some pretty good ones. Um, let's see, we've got Dragon Buster Destruction Sword, 3 Max C. Mecha Phantom Beast O-Lion, 2 Doki Doki, Prank Kids Dropsies, 3 Adamant Speeder Seeker, 3 Adamant Speeder Researcher, 3 Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, 1 Gigantes, 3 Quakimir Guardian, 1 Tackle Crusader, 3 Prank Kids Roxies, 3 Adamant Speeder Analyzer, 3 Quakimir Supplier, 3 Block Dragon, 1 Nibiru, 1 Lightning Storm, 2 Called By, and 2 Droplet. Extra Deck's gonna have Adamant Speeders and Raptite, Borload Savage Dragon, Adamant Speeder is in Dragite, a Baron De Fleur, Gallant Granite, Link Spider, Prank Kids Meow Meow Moo, Crystron Halky Fibrax, Nightmare Phoenix, Prank Kids Zodo Dodo Do, IP Mascarina, Union Carrier, Nightmare Unicorn, um, the Appalachia Bow the Goddess, and then finally Access Code Talker. So yeah, it's um, it's it's funny, right? Like I, I like I said, I was planning on using Adamantspeeder in gold and then switching to Trizu for plat and diamond. But then, like I said, I started with gold, uh, or I started with Adamantspeeder in gold, and then uh, we weren't able to excavate these diamonds. <laughs> hey, I just, I just thought of that. I should, you know, I'll I'll work with that with a title and thumbnail. <laughs> uh, we didn't excavate the diamond rank until we actually switched over to Adamantspeeder. So, um, you know, generally speaking, I like to. S generally stick to one deck when I ladder, not just in Master Duel, but like, you know, when I played Hearthstone and Runeterra in the past, I think it's typically better to stick to one deck, but, I mean, if you know multiple decks well enough, sometimes it can be better to just, uh, you know, get a bit of a change of pace uh, from the deck you're currently using, and, uh, you know, work with something new, and I think that's what I needed here, and I think Adam Mancipator is really able to help me with that. Uh, like I said, we've got some pretty good uh, games to show you. I Normally, with Adam Emancipator, it's so hard to find good games, right? Because most people just concede um, as soon as you start comboing off. And that actually still did happen, but I, one of the reasons I really like this part of the season, the first, especially the first 48 hours, like, like I'm in now, um, but this really early part of the season at higher ranks is so cutthroat that you don't get people who, like, snap concede. You know, you'll actually get these, like, 
nice back and forths and situations that don't happen often where the game looks really one-sided at the beginning, but then you're able to like flip it around. Um, I just love it. I love this, uh, this highly competitive uh, aspect of the game. But okay, that's enough rambling now. Let's go ahead and actually take a look at these games here. Okay, so this first game we're going to look at is one that I'm particularly eager to show you because uh, it's a lot of, it's probably one of my most highly requested uh, kind of games to feature, which is Going Second Against Drytrons. <laughs> and uh, we gotta love to showcase a good game where we actually win when going second. I guess, spoiler alert, I'm going to win this game, but uh, we are going to actually win Going Second Against Drytrons. So right off the bat, they're going to Prosperity for the Orange Herald. It's obviously a problem for me. I'm going to try to activate Maxi anyway, just to get the extra resources out of their hand but unfortunately they not only found the orange herald of the prosperity but they even also had an eva in hand so this is a scenario where i think a lot of people even when climbing at high plat or diamond you know early in the season like this would just snap concede right here they'd figure oh it's better to just you know go quickly to the next game as opposed to wasting our time watching our opponent combo just to top deck nothing uh, more than likely and then move on but here's the thing, and I've said this for a long time now, like, we're playing two Droplet in, our, in this Adam Anspeter build, right? And one of the main reasons that we're playing Droplet is to, you know, have a tool against Drytron when, you know, going second. So if we just auto-concede to Drytron going second and they start comboing every single time, there's no point to us really having, I mean, there's not no point to us having the Droplet, but we're, we're running this Droplet and not even using it for one of its main, and in my opinion, main uses, especially in this particular meta that we're in right now. Um, and that is, again, to counter Drytron, so... Like, I, sure, I guess in those scenarios, you could just auto-concede if you wanted to, but then at that point, just don't bother playing Droplet, you know what I mean? And, you know, personally, I think it's just a better policy to have the, you know, Droplets in the deck and actually, you know, play the game out. Not that I think there's anything wrong with conceding if you're trying to save time, but that's why I say, if you do want to do that, then, that, you know, don't play Droplets. But to me, personally, the time... The time, quote unquote, wasted watching our opponents combo out during the games when they they have it and we don't have droplet. Um, that is worth the, admittedly few, but the games where you actually do draw into or open the droplet when going second against Strytrons, uh, and you actually manage to you know uh, use it and win after doing so. So. Um, yeah, you can see our opponent's just got, like, the complete wombo combo here, by the way. I, I almost never see them pull Ancient Sacred Wyvern, so... Either they have a lot of extra resources, or that's kind of what it seems is they're making, like, two Ben 10s here, like... And our opponent dropped the Herald super early into their combo, too. Um, you know, I've still never played Herald myself, so... I don't know if maybe my opponent could have done something better, if this is all just, like, excess stuff that they're doing, but... Either way, it's pretty scary, you know? <laughs> Getting... Yeah, heralded and uh, you know it's funny too this game happened like I think when I was at plat one and three wins so I was like super close to diamond it's like oh, oh my god another loss to Drytron but look at this we actually did peel the droplet off the top of our deck so you know say what you will you can call me lucky but you know I I at least waited. <laughs> I at least waited to make sure that I drew it, and uh, I think that's really the, the not. An, I think I know that's really the most important thing I want to impart here is that playing the game out can be so so worth it and so so important more often than you probably think. Um, you know, not more often than not, not more than 50% of the time, but more often than you probably think. Also, I wanted to point out here that I am going to use, like, I was pretty tempted to only drop it, like, two of these things, but honestly, uh, if we just drop it, you know, the Herald and the IP, then the Beatrice can send an Eva, and they can add an Orange Herald to mess us up. Uh, if we just hit the Beatrice and the Herald, then they can IP and go into Unicorn, Nightmare Unicorn, and that'll really mess us up, so even though it is risky to, you know, droplet for three and only have the one analyzer excavate literally the only other option is to just lose pretty much so uh, it is worth the risk here and as you can see uh, we do have to take a bit of a weird combo line but we are able to eventually go into block dragon and get that search set up i went into ip mascarina here uh, so that i could keep the guardian up just in case they had a hand trap 
uh, even though they hadn't really been prompted. To, well, I guess they were getting prompts to activate, but it was for, you know, quick effects that were negated on board. So I just wanted to be absolutely sure they didn't have, like, Nibiru or some other hand trap. So I wanted to keep the Guardian up. That's why I went with the Gallant Granite and, and the Block Dragon into the IP Mascarena. Um, because it was a fairly generic, you know, Link 2. It would get two Link markers open. Uh, and it would be very easy to link climb up to access go talker because I am going to be going for lethal on this turn uh, I'm going to you know climb up to unicorn first and actually one of the reasons I climbed to unicorn was not even for more access code talker attack with but was to also just free up one zone so that I could then excavate with the raptite uh, that is something you have to be kind of careful about uh, with that emancipators in general and I had to be with this particular combo here it was just my zone placement uh, making sure I was keeping enough zones open so I could actually get my excavates you know because uh, sometimes very occasionally um, well if you're watching your zone placement um, and zone you know make sure you don't fill up on zones while you still have excavates active um, but it has happened before where, you know, I have to sync with an Adamant Spirit Tuner that hasn't used its Excavate yet, and it feels bad, you know? Uh, speaking of things that feel bad, by the way, watch this Dragite Excavate. I'm actually going to completely whiff on it. First time I've ever completely whiffed on a Dragite, but yep, no rocks at all, so I don't get any removal off this Dragite. Which is fine, we've still got Baron and Access Code Talker, which is going to be enough. We'll Baron to get rid of the Herald, and then Access Code to get rid of the, um... Uh, the Ancient Sacred Wyvern, and then we'll banish, you know, to bring back Block Dragon, and that's going to be enough damage in order to beat our opponent. So, yeah, like I said, always exciting to have a game where, uh, you know, you're going second against Drytron, it looks hopeless, but then you actually do manage to draw that droplet. Always feels good. Okay, let's take a look at the next game here. Okay, so this game is going to be against Zombie World Eldwitch, which is, it's actually a pretty good thing I was uh, playing at Emancipators and not Tri-Z when I played against this deck, because Zombie World is a very niche card, but has uh, a lot of, you know, propensity to wreck Tri-Z. Uh, due to its ability to turn everything on field and board into zombies, but I'm going to normal summon Guardian. My opponent actually chains Max C, which I don't even think is a bad play, and one that I've actually done for myself from time to time, uh, which is chaining a Max C in response to the Quad King or Guardian. Uh, the reason I don't see that's a bad play, even though it looks really weird, is because uh, if your opponent normal summons Quad King or Guardian, it's not uncommon for them to then follow up with the Adam Emancipator Researcher. So if you max C, then they either have to not negate and then be under max C and throw a shot combo, or they have to sack the Guardian to negate the max C, but then they don't have a rock so they can't special analyze or they've already used the normal summon. So um, now I just happen to be lucky, I guess, quote unquote, uh, by not being lucky. <laughs> Weirdly enough, as weird as that sounds, I was lucky by being unlucky in this scenario. And I didn't actually have a follow-up, so my opponent ended up using their max C for you know, pretty much no reason. But uh, my opponent is going to get the zombie world off here, which actually doesn't really hurt Adam Emancipator all that much. There was one effect it stopped. I'm trying to remember what it was. It was something about like a monster that needed rocks as a material or something. I don't remember off the top of my head. I might remember as we watch the replay here, but uh, fortunately, you know, like Block Dragon and Gigantes have to banish Earths from Grave, and you know, that doesn't matter if they're zombies. As long as they're Earth, it's fine, so. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and drop it and actually send both of the uh, block dragons here. I'm also going to send the, or I'm also going to make one of the, the Eldritch so that way it uh, does not have enough attack points to run over the supplier. Not that I need the supplier, but you know, it's just nice and the block dragon makes no difference if it's in the hand or grave anyway. So, Pona actually then furthers their combo into Revendred. Um, well, I think this is, uh, oh, Savior here it is. It's Revendred Savior here, so. Um, which is a, kind of a first for me. I don't, uh, I'm not too familiar with this deck. And it's weird because I thought this was a 60 card deck. When I went to confirm the opponent's deck, I think it's actually like 52, which is a little bit weird. And then, of course, Doom King Baldurok. This is probably my least favorite card <laughs> in when play against this deck. It's very, very, very annoying uh, being able to negate things once per chain. And, of course, being Eldritch, my opponent is also going to get a whole bunch of back row during their end phase as well. A Scarlet Sanguine and then a, uh, uh, what is it, the White Destiny. And since they're playing the Zombie World variant, these are actually a little bit more scary. Since they have an Eldritch monster out, they can summon any zombies. Uh, which, like I said, is, is definitely very scary. So, I'm gonna Special Analyzer and then immediately Normal Summon the Guardian. 
Uh, my opponent's going to try to negate my Analyzer, but of course, since I have the Guardian out, I can go ahead and just negate and destroy the Baldurok here. Don't have to be scared of that. Like that other game that we saw against Drytrons, I am kind of banking everything on this Analyzer Excavate, but you really do just have to do that sometimes, as uh, iffy as that might sound. Fortunately, at the very end, we hit Doki Doki, which is honestly probably the worst, you know, of the cards in our deck in this situation to hit because we have nothing in hand, and it doesn't really advance the board state or combos inherently. But since we do have those block dragons on standby in the graveyard, we are still able to go into some amount of plays. Uh, I'm going to go into a Chris Strong Healthy Fibrax here. Uh, that way I can go ahead and get the O-Lion. More importantly, well, here's the thing. I actually was intending to chain block the Halky Fibrax here, but I actually I actually uh, screwed up and did it in the wrong order. So, uh, of course, the Baldrock is able to negate the Halky Fibrax here. So, um, that's, that's, you know, a little bit tough. I would have liked the O-Lion, but, you know, we're going to get the Black Dragon Surge, which is by far the most important part here. And I believe, actually, now that I think about it, well, no, because it wasn't on my field. I was going to say, oh, I actually chain blocked the block dragon effect, but, you know, block dragon wasn't on the field, so Baldrock. So, therefore, it wasn't a zombie. Well, it was in the graveyard. Hang on, let's for chain a zombie monster, except... So, did I accidentally do it right by chain blocking the block dragon? Could this have negated it? Yeah, because I don't think it, it doesn't say on the field or, like, your opponent controls, so... Huh, maybe I actually accidentally did that right. Or maybe I meant to do it and I just forgot. Like I meant to do it that way, I don't know. That is kind of the disadvantage of you know talking about replays. Is it's better obviously to get the thought process in the moment. Um, but you know, again, also with the nature of Adam Anspader in general, it's kind of harder to get live games uh, because you just never know when you're going to play if you're actually going to get good ones. Um, and also, like I mentioned uh, a couple of days ago in one of the Tri-Brigade videos, I think actually yesterday is now that I think about the order these are coming out, but, uh, you know, I just, when it comes to climbing in the first 48 hours like this, I'm so, like, I just get in such a mode with it that I really, I really can't do good live commentary uh, and be as focused on the gameplay as I wanted to. Uh, it's just really hard for me to split my attention two ways. Or maybe, I don't know, I, I, guess, I guess I could just be getting in my own head about that a little bit. I mean, I am really good about that. Getting in my own head, talking in circles, you all know about the latter. <laughs> but uh, in any case, we're going to go ahead and go into a Dragite here after also going into Access Code Talker. Uh, we're able to balance everything, don't whiff on this one. And we can actually bring back Block Dragon for the lethal, which our opponent realizes as they then go to concede. Very nice. All right, let's go ahead and look at the next game here. Okay, so this game is going to be against BA, or, uh, well, no, it was just BA, or PK, not BA. Burning, or, you know, Phantom Knight, not Burning Abyss. Let me actually, you know, use my words here. <laughs> All right, so we have a bit of a mediocre opening hand, but we do at least have the double Doki Doki, and we also, at the very least, have this, uh, called by here for the Max C. Kind of sucks that we also have Max C in our hand as well, but, you know, what can you do? So, like I said, you know, mediocre, but we do at least have some amount of plays, right? I'm gonna go ahead and get the Adamant's Peter Seeker here so that I can get an Excavate. And we do hit, at the very least, the Guardian. But looks like we have our options here, uh, including Roxy's, which is like uh, always a relief to see Roxy's uh, when you're excavating with an Adamant's Peter Seeker. It's like, you could have, if you could just normal summon a Seeker and then excavate and just have nothing else. But as long as you hit that Roxy's, that's like the most important part. Oh, it's so crucial. And of course, here we're going into the pretty standard Prank Kids line. Um, you know, getting our free Link 2. Uh, if you want a you know, more in depth look at how that combo works and how other Adamant Speeder plays work, uh, do feel free to go ahead and check out my Adamant Speeder combo guide in the description. Alrighty here, so yep, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and go into Halky Fibrax. This actually is a time where it would have been nice to have the Herald of the Arclight in my extra deck because I could have synced the Seeker and the um, Doki Doki into Herald of the Arclight and then overlaid Herald and what was on the field, the Roxies into Gallant Granite and just go straight into Block Dragon from there. But since I don't have any extra deck, I do have to do things a little bit differently. Uh, I'm going to use the I'm going to go into the Halky Fibrax and then use the O Lion to set up some synchro plays. Unfortunately, I do hit my excavations here. Uh, you know, whiffing those would have been pretty, pretty uh, devastating there, but 
You know, as things are, we're still able to go into a two material Appalachia here. Uh, not quite the three material we would have liked to go into, but at least we're able to set that up along with our Borload Savage Dragon. And you see, we were able to do all this off of just like Doki Doki, like two Doki Doki. That was our opening hand there. That was the line that we used in order to get to this point, right? It was just two Doki Doki. So um, it's just really cool. Like it's it's just kind of it's a good. This game is a good example of what I really like about Adam and Peter, and it, why I think I tend to do pretty well with it is, you know, when I'm comboing, even using standard lines, I'll find myself oftentimes like just kind of backdooring into a really, really good line that I hadn't thought about before. And Adam Inspeeder is all about that. You know, I see that opening hand and I'm like, ugh, all I have is double Doki Doki. Well, God, I hope I can pull something together. And yeah, it wasn't like, you know, as good as what a quote unquote standard combo or like a, you know, standard hand would get you. But we can see here that even a hand that looks really mediocre is still able to end on, you know, enough negates in the extra deck lock to completely c exclude our opponent from being able to do, yeah, you know, as usual, pretty much anything at all. Alrighty, let's take a look at the next one. Okay, this game is going to be against Thunder Dragons, which is a deck I've actually kind of been thinking about building. I mean, I want to get a Colossus anyway for Prank Kids, but... Alrighty, so you see we've got the Analyzer and the Researcher here. The rest of the hand is pretty mediocre, but, you know, at the very least we are able to start with multiple Adam Anticipator Tuners. We are always loving to see that. Are always loving to see that. My word choice can be really weird sometimes. Okay, we do actually whiff off that first Excavate, which is very unfortunate, but we do at the very least hit with the second one, and we do hit a Guardian with it, which I always like to hit so that we can, yeah, just ensure that we have uh, safe plays, basically. So, I'm gonna go ahead and go into Healthy Fibrax here. I'll even summon the O-Line out of my hand. Uh, it used the Guardian as a material, just because I have to. Um, you know, even though I just said I like to have Guardian up in order to make sure my plays are safe, uh, if we have to use that as a material to keep comboing, I mean, that's obviously, you know, more important to keep comboing than to make sure we have um, the negate up. Otherwise, what are we protecting? We don't have a combo line to protect, so. All right, here we get the Roxies. I'm actually going to go into the Meow Meow Moo here and go into the Frankens line because mostly for this uh, Roxy cycle, and it actually ends up paying off big time as I top deck the Block Dragon here. Um, but we'll definitely keep going into it anyway just to get a free Link 2. I'm actually not going to really use it for much of anything this Dodo Dodo do here. Like, I won't use it for anything that I couldn't have used the Roxies for. Um, but the extra material as well as the cycle, like I said, the cycle was so crucial because we were able to top deck Block Dragon here. And then we're able to go into good old Appalusia. And then from there we can go ahead and get our standard Block Dragon searches. And we can even go into a 4 material Appalusia because, because we have that extra uh, Prank Kids Dodo Dodo Do that we use. You see, we only use it as one material, but it was still an extra material that we don't normally have access to at this point in the game. Alright, from here we are able to then sink into our Borload Savage Dragon. It's looking more like our kind of standard combo line at this point. Ah uh, yes, we're even also able to set up Dragite. It's actually kind of rare that you can set up Dragite along with the Appalusia and Borload. Um, and the extra deck lock on top of that. But that's why I wanted to show this game off, even though this is just kind of like a... Yeah, we take our first turn and then we're done <laughs> with the match. I mean, our opponent's gonna pretty much concede at the end of this combo line. But, you know, getting off a of four material Appalusia plus the Dragite and the Borload and the extra deck lock is just kind of uncommon. So, um, it really does kind of just depend on what your excavates are a lot of the time. Uh, you know, that opening hand wasn't anything like too, too spectacular. I mean, Analyzer plus Researcher is pretty good, but. Um, we even whiffed the uh, we even whiffed uh, yeah one of the excavates there so it really was just about having the extra um, excavate or the extra material on board that really made that hand great. All right, let's go ahead and look at the next game here. Okay, so we've got another game against Drytrons here. Uh, not going second in this one, but with this hand, I mean, going first didn't really do us a whole lot of favors here. Uh, we're just going to have to T-set and pass, which hasn't been good since, you know, 2007. That's not about, I mean, not even 2007. It's been like 2005, 6 was the last time T-set pass was a good turn one. So, 
The opponent's gonna actually be able to Dawn of Herald right off the bat. Definitely not good for me, as you see I've got this Nibiru in my hand. Like before I was thinking, well, I have to T-set pass, but at the very least I do have, um, I do have, you know, this uh, Nibiru plus Ash in hand here. But, yep, nope, we can't even, uh, <laughs> we can't even uh, do much here as our opponent's got the Herald, so. Yep, it's a bit unfortunate, but, uh, you know, they had to do a kind of a weird hand, them, or they had kind of a weird hand themselves. They had to play Dawn of the Herald and then send double Ash in order to even summon the Herald. Uh, they did manage to add an Ash back, but I have my suspicions that, you know, they, they're going to be able to Ash here, sure. But I don't think they're going to have too many other negates up at this point in time. So, I want to kind of take advantage of my, how bad my opponent's hand is right now. I'm going to flip up the Sackle Crusader that I set on turn 1. And I'm just going to go ahead and go into Union Carrier with the Meow Meow Moo. Uh, and I'm mainly doing this so that I can use Sackle Crusader to flip down the Herald of Perfection here. Uh, and then I can Union Carrier and equip the O-Lion. So this might look a little weird, right? It's like, well, what did that really accomplish? Well, now that my opponent's Herald of Perfection is facing down exactly what you saw here, they just had to pass. Because if they wanted to flip their Herald up to use for negates again, they have to flip summon it. And that means they have to put it in attack mode. And as we all know, Herald of Perfection only has 1,800 attack points. So this Union Carrier I put out alone, a little in the Guardian in my hand, are able of, or you know, perfectly capable of running over the Herald of Perfection in that scenario. Um, so it's funny, I, I've recently been talking about possibly taking Tackle Crusader out of my deck because I haven't used it much, and then we have this game where it came in so much clutch. I mean, sure my opponent might just not have any fairy monsters anyway, but again, this putting the Herald face down is so uniquely powerful in this specific scenario, uh, because again, you can't negate it while it's face down. If they want to get it face up, they have to flip it up and put it in attack mode specifically. Uh, so. Yep, my opponent is forced to just pass without doing anything here. So I want to show this game again because, you know, obviously it's always it's always nice to show victories against Tritrons. I mean, we learned that playing Trizu in the last days, the last couple of days videos as well. But um, it's also nice to show playing against Drytron, you know, playing out of a mediocre hand. I mean, sure, our opponent had kind of a mediocre hand as well, but their mediocre hand is still able to get them a Herald of Perfection out. Uh, and as you can see, now that we have the Nightmare Unicorn out, we're able to uh, safely shuffle back the Herald into the deck. So now even if our opponent does or, you know, did or will draw a Fairy, I uh, doubt it's not going to really matter anymore. So from here we can get back the Block Dragon and then we put the Unicorn into Access Code Talker. Uh, then we get Block Dragon Surge as well as the ability, I think, to bring, bring Block Dragon back again with what's in our graveyard. So... Yeah, another really, really nice, solid win against Drytron. Okay, I've got one more game to show you guys, and then we're going to go ahead and call it for the video. Okay, this last game is going to be the Adam Peter Mirror match. I was actually just, you know, eyeing my opponent's deck list when I went to confirm that just now. And my opponent's got some interesting tech stuff. They're playing some more of the techie uh, excavate options, like uh, Rock Band Xeno Guitar and Revival Golem, but I noticed they're also playing two Droll and Lockbird, which in this particular meta is actually, like, this this highly competitive, like, um, point of the early meta right now. That's actually not that bad of a tech choice to have Droll and Lockbird. That's uh, pretty good against Drytron uh, and Trizu, uh, especially, and those are two of the most common decks you'll see on the ladder right now, but especially Drytron is so frequent right now. Uh, and Droll Knock is so good against them, so yeah, our opponent actually has one of those hands where um, they have plays, they just have to banish their whole hand with Block Dragon, which you know, I've had definitely had that happen with me a couple of times, so um, I know it, I know the feels, <laughs> but it's funny because even though it feels really weird to just throw out your whole hand and summon a not monster from your hand to do so, like it feels inherently bad. But you gotta remember, you know, that block dragon is gonna get you those three cards back. And they're not just gonna be any three old or any old three cards. They're gonna be three live cards that go into immediately into a whole bunch of plays. So uh, definitely, definitely always worth it. Unfortunately, I did not open any hand traps here, so I just kinda have to <laughs> sit and watch my opponent do some some Ad Emancipator plays. Um, but I kind of wanted to show this game because, you know, even though it's not from my perspective, I like showing these games where as the Ad Emancipator player. Um, you have to make kind of weird lines in order to get your combos started or keep them going. Um, but they, you know, end up going into standard or sometimes even better than standard opening lines. But uh, what my opponent's been doing so far here is, is fairly par for the course. Um, now, hang on, I actually wanted to see, did they whiff completely off that Raptite? No, they revealed a bunch of stuff, so I don't, that's weird, I don't understand why they didn't summon anything off that Raptite. I thought about that mid-game, too. I'm actually glad I remembered to, to look for that. 
I remember thinking, like, that was weird. I thought I saw, you know, plenty of things from the summon, so... I don't know, it could be something simple that I'm missing, but... Yeah, our opponent's got the Bore Load here and the Omni Negate, but they don't have the Extra Deck Lock, even though they do have a couple... Well, a couple... A bunch of Negates up, so... We can try to play through it with our hand. I'm going to lead with the Analyzer Effect. They are, of course, going to Appalusia here, but uh, we were able to at least, you know, get the one of the Negates off there. I'll then go ahead and summon Guardian and then Special the Researcher here. I can chain a Guardian uh, to the Appalusia potentially, but I ultimately decide not to. I'm just going to go ahead and let it... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and let it resolve, then I'm going to take a page out of my opponent's book and banish three from hand to summon my own block dragon. Uh, getting rid of a... Oh, whoops, sorry, I'm shaking the desk, I think, a little bit there, my bad. Uh, getting rid of a, uh, a, the, a couple of the negates here. Alright, from this point, I'm going to go ahead and, and go into Nightmare Phoenix and activate the effect. And I'm doing this to chain block the block dragon's effect so that they... Uh, they uh, <laughs> sound like a soothener there, um, so, so that the boar load isn't able to negate the block dragon search. All right, I did get the block dragon search off. Always nice. I'm then going to go into nightmare unicorn, which is actually going to be a mistake on my part because I I didn't realize that you know, or I, I failed to remember rather that you know the boar load still has the boral counters on it. It's not the you know having the card equipped that lets it do the omni negates. It's the boral counters that the equip gives. So. Yeah, Borload, even though we just blew up the back row of Nightmare Phoenix, is still able to negate. Another reason I kind of wanted to show this game off is because it's a pretty rare thing to actually see, but it's a very good thing to know. Right, I am able to go into an access code eventually here, uh, which, you know, fortunately Borload is only once per turn, so... Now, unfortunately, though, we can't destroy the Block Dragon with card effects. Uh, so we're going to have to leave it on our opponent's board. I mean, I guess our opponent would have gotten searches anyway, so... But our opponent does top deck a live play. They get the Dropsies uh, into Meow Meow Moo, and then they can link the Meow Meow Moo and Block Dragon. Well, then they get Roxies from their deck as well. And then, yeah, now from here, they're able to link away the Block Dragon, and now they have plenty of plays, especially with this IP Mascarena here. Now, they did already use Gigantes, but Meow Meow Moo, even though it's, you know, it's a cat, it, it looks like it should be a beast. It is actually a rock, so the opponent is able to still special summon the Adam Peter Researcher here. Which is funny, because actually that, that got me for a second during this game. I saw this in a, this scenario, and I was like, oh, wait, they don't have a rock, they can't keep going. Oh, this is awesome. But, yeah, no, nope, Meow Meow Moo is, in fact, a rock, so they do in fact get to, and plus I think they could have just summoned a block dragon back anyway if they really didn't have a, a rock on board. Alright, from this point our opponent's got the Baron out and then, yeah, they get to keep comboing. I mean, I really could have conceded by this point, but uh, again, you know, like I said earlier in that first game, I, I tend not to concede until, you know, my opponent has the lethal on board and is about to do the damage. Like here, I think I concede when they summon the Boral Sword here. Um, and as they yeah, and as they go to bring back the block dragon, because you know at this point it's 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 obvious they've got it. You know, then they know what they they know how to find the lethal. So, yep, we managed to get defeated there, but at least it was in the mirror match. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and look at the deck list as always for the outro here. Okay, everybody, as always, I just wanted to give a hearty thank you for watching all the way to the end of the video like this. That is super duper awesome that you're doing that, and um, yeah, it's it's even better too if you're commenting and subscribing and or checking out my links to my Twitter and Twitch, but um, you know, I don't want to like, you know, feel like I'm pressuring you into any of that because really just the fact that you're watching is like far more than enough for me. Um, yeah, so at this point I'm in Diamond 5 and I'm assuming at this point I don't know for sure that I can't derank down to Plat 1, so I might spend some time making deck profiles and just tweaking some decks for the new ban list while I'm in Diamond 5 and can't, I think anyway, I'm going to double check on this, but can't derank down to Plat 1. I shouldn't be able to if it works like all the other ranks, because I was looking here in the notification uh, and it only ex talks explicitly about Diamond Tier 1. And it says Diamond Rank details will be added, you know, in the next update in early May, so, um, I don't know. But in any case, uh, I might start working on some more content. I'm still going to try to get up to Diamond 1 uh, in relatively good time. Uh, my goal is to get there just before the Banlust drops, um, which I don't think will be too difficult. That's, at the time of recording this, it's uh, pretty early on May 2nd, so that's still, you know, a week or just under, like, barely under a week. 
uh, away at this point. Actually, I think it's during the evening on the 9th, so it might be over a week. In any case, we, I think we have more than enough time to get up to Diamond 1. But, uh, yep, I'm going to go ahead and stop talking in circles like I always do. Um, and just go ahead and sign off here. So, thanks for watching, everybody. This is Xlex. I hope you have a fan-tastic day.